This is Catholic Daily Reflections for the second weekday Mass after Epiphany. Today's reflection is entitled, Trusting Jesus in All Things. By now it was already late, and Jesus' disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Do you trust Jesus? Trust is required of us on many levels. It's required on the level of receiving all the spiritual, emotional, and psychological strength we need to not only survive each day, but also to thrive in many ways. Trust is also required on the level of God providing for our basic day-to-day needs, such as food, shelter, and clothing. For most people, these areas of trust are not difficult, but for others it requires a tremendous amount of surrender. This gospel situation provides a context in which Jesus is able to test the trust of his disciples. At first, they fail the test by panicking and asking Jesus to send the crowds away to obtain food. But in the end, they are awestruck as they see the providence of God at work. In the end, Jesus multiplies five loaves of bread and two fish so as to feed over 5,000. First of all, this gospel does not tell us that we can be irresponsible in providing for our own needs and simply trust that Jesus will miraculously provide for us all the time. It's not about abandoning our own duty to work and provide for ourselves and our families. What this gospel is about is trust. In this context, the followers of Jesus were being drawn to put their eyes on our Lord and be with Him. They were being drawn spiritually to abandon all cares in life in that moment so that they could be fed spiritually. They were being invited into an act of faith, and it's clear that the crowds were indeed trusting in this interior invitation. It's clear by the fact that they were still with him despite their evident physical hunger. One key message, therefore, is that God sometimes calls us to trust him in ways that do not seem to be immediately practical or logical. The practical thing to do would have been to leave and acquire food for themselves. But the supernatural call of grace at that moment told this group of 5,000 that they should remain with Jesus and trust that all would work out. And that's what they did, and it did work out. Reflect today upon how God sometimes calls you to follow him in ways that do not immediately make sense. Don't be surprised if you sense, at times, God calling you to listen more intently to his promise of providence than your own natural deduction of human logic. God's ways are far above our ways. Sometimes his call is radical. And when you are deeply convicted in faith that God is calling you to trust him, then do it. Trust him in all things, and he will always provide for you. Let us pray. Lord, my trust in you at times is weak. At times I doubt your goodness and your providence in my life. Help me to always trust more in your gentle invitation than in my own conclusions in life. Help me to be led by you always, so as to live daily in accord with your perfect plan. Jesus, I trust in you. January 7th, 2020 Weekday in the season of Christmas A reading from the first letter of St. John Beloved, 
Let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as expiation for our sins. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy two hundred days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. Those who ate of the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord.